The dazzling appearance of a peacock's tail is one of nature's great wonders. Male peacocks will shake their brilliantly colored long tail feathers to attract females in a courtship display known as train rattling. With its rattling sound and shimmering patterns of emerald and turquoise, the tail feathers appear to almost glow in their own light. And now the way in which these colors are produced could help us design the next generation of computer display screens. Hi there, I'm Patrick Ayi, and welcome to 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter from the BBC World Service, the podcast which reveals how animals like the blue mussel, tardigrade and desert spider have been helping us solve some really challenging problems. And thanks so much for all your biomimicry ideas. We've chosen some of them for a special live show, which will be our final episode of the season, which we've recorded with an audience and with some animals. But please do keep sending us your ideas, and if we get enough, we might even make another series. So we look forward to hearing from you. Okay, in this episode number 28, we'll hear how it's not only female peacocks that are attracted to the male's dazzling display, but scientists too, as they look for ways of producing color that uses far less energy. Just think about this for a moment. How many screens, like reading tablets and phones, do you have access to? Now, if you multiply that by how many people live on your street, then your town, your country, and across the whole world, well, just think about how much energy all that color costs to produce. If, however, we could find alternative ways of producing colors like the peacock does, we could make some serious energy savings. I'm pretty sure that the first time I saw a peacock was in London when I was about 11 or 12 years old. My uncle used to take us to an adventure fun house on the weekends. And to get there, we had to walk through one of the nearby public gardens, which were home to free roaming peacocks. If there was ever an animal that embodied beauty itself, the peacock would be right up there with the best of them. They strut about with such elegance, but of course, what's most striking about them is that moment when they raise their long tail feathers to reveal a dazzling display of iridescent blue and green eye spots. There's no denying that these birds were and still are one of the most eye-catching creatures I've ever laid eyes on. More recently, I came across them again at an old villa in southern Spain, where about five peacocks were roaming freely in the grounds. As the male peacocks fanned out their tails, I noticed for the first time that it's not just a visual display, but an auditory one as well. As their tails shake, it sounds like that rustling of leaves as the wind blows through the trees. Oh, and did you know they can fly? Really well. I found out the hard way as the birds in the villa would fly up into their favorite tree to roost overnight. Of course, that tree just happened to be right next to my bedroom window. And in the mornings, well, let's just say I didn't need to set my alarm clock for the entire week. Thanks, guys. Now, here's an interesting fact that I think might surprise many of you out there. Although the term peacock is commonly used to refer to birds of both sexes, technically, it's only the males that are peacocks whereas the females are peahens. Together as a species, they're known as peafowl. Males do their best to gather a harem of several females, each of which will lay three to five eggs. Despite their size, wild peafowl often roost in forest trees, like I mentioned earlier. So look up as well as down if you ever go searching for one. A rather distinct and lesser known species, the Congo peafowl, is native only to the Congo Basin. But it's the blue or Indian peafowl, which is found in India and Sri Lanka, and the green peafowl, found in Java and Myanmar, that we're most familiar with. I think that we can all agree that peacocks like showing off. And whilst the key to impressing a female, be it their long tails, colorful patterns, or rattling display, is not entirely clear, what is clear is the striking nature of their remarkably colored eye spots. 
But not all is quite what it seems. You're probably familiar with the idea that we see colour thanks to specialised receptors at the back of our eyes. When we look at a red apple, it appears red because the surface of the apple reflects the wavelengths of light that we see as red, whilst at the same time absorbs all the other wavelengths. Similarly, an object that appears blue does so because it reflects the wavelengths of light that appear to us as blue and absorbs the rest. An object which appears white, however, reflects all the wavelengths of light back to us. This is called pigment colour. Now, the colours we see in peacock tails are produced in a different way. Peacock tails appear to glimmer in their own light, and here's how it works. If you were to zoom in on the tail feathers and study them under a microscope, you'd see that the surface of the feathers have grooves, grooves that are small enough to interfere with the wavelength of light. Variations in the size of the grooves allows them to reflect different parts of the visible spectrum. And these are the colors we see. In other words, the feathers are structured to reflect light at precise wavelengths. Ordinary white light hits a tail and is, at its simplest, transformed into the brilliant iridescent colors that we see. This is called structural color, color that's caused by an interference effect rather than by pigment. More precisely, it's color that's produced by a microscopically structured surface that is fine enough to interfere with visible light. This is very different from the creation of color through pigments, which create color by absorbing certain kinds of light and reflecting others. Peacock tail feathers are actually pigmented brown, but their microscopic structures make them also reflect blue, turquoise and green light and are often iridescent. So why do peacocks have such dazzling coloured tails? The naturalist Charles Darwin suggested their purpose was to attract females and that this showy feature of the male had evolved by sexual selection. More recently, it's been suggested that their tails are a so-called honest signal of the male's fitness, since less fit males would be at a disadvantage trying to survive with such a large and conspicuous tail. To attract a female, the males shake out their train, spreading and raising the feathers and then vibrate them when the female is close, in such a way that it makes the eye spots appear as though they're hovering in front of the moving feathers. A team led by Rosalind Dakin, who since moved to Carleton University in Canada, recorded high-speed video of train rattling during peafowl courtship. They discovered that no matter how vigorously the peacocks shook their tails, the eye spots barely moved. So to the peahens, the eye spots would appear to be stationary while the rest of the tail oscillated about them. This is similar to what happens when you pluck a guitar string. For a given note or frequency, there are parts of the string that do not move. These are called nodes. On peacock feathers, the eye spots are roughly located at a node, and so pretty much stand still during the display, rotating just a little back and forth. Barbs on the feathers help to hold the mass of the eye spot together, and this in turn influences where the nodes occur. Vibrating a long train of feathers at high speed requires considerable muscle strength, which is why the researchers think the visual display could indeed be a measure of the male's physical prowess. Michael Platt, a neuroscientist at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States of America, used eye tracking equipment with his colleagues to explore what it is that peahens look at when males display in front of them. What they found, rather surprisingly, is that females pay a lot of attention to the lower part of the train, virtually ignoring the top part, and they spend relatively little time looking at the eye spots, unless the male is further away or the lower part of the body is obscured. The results suggest to Platt and his team that the eye spots play a role in attracting the female's attention initially, but what really matters is the size of the tail rather than the ornamentation. Size is related to a male's age, and the age of a male is a pretty good indicator of breeding quality in these birds, so it's not a bad strategy for females to use. 
Whatever the role of the highly ornamented tail, there's no question that the vibrant iridescent colors are truly impressive. And it's not only peahens that think so. Engineers and researchers have long tried to harness the properties of structural color, and more so in recent years, where there could be a demand for this within reflective displays, such as ebook readers and next generation electronic paper displays. If we could build structural color into screens, we could create color using far less energy. But there are challenges. Structural color has a thing called shimmering or the rainbow effect that makes the colors unstable depending on what angle you're viewing them. Going back to our peacock, if you look at the same bit of the tail from different angles, you get shifting patterns of color. This is down to the complex structure of the feathers. But this would be really annoying if it happened on your screen. Imagine the colors shifting all the time as you try to watch or read something. But now, a team of researchers from the University of Michigan, led by Jake Waugh, Professor of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, has been able to lock in certain parts of a wavelength, making the reflected hues hold true, despite the changes in the angle of view. They made use of a technique called light funneling that can catch and trap particular wavelengths of light. To do this, the researchers etched grooves in a plate of glass with a technique commonly used to manufacture computer chips. The grooves are so small that they're measured on what's called a nanoscale. A nanometer measures in at a billionth of a meter. That's seriously small. The grooved glass slate was then coated with a thin layer of silver. As this work started around the summer of 2012, when the Olympic Games were being held, the etching was a tiny reproduction of the well-known symbol of the Olympic rings. Each ring was smaller than a human hair, with a width of about 0.02 millimeters. The grooves were way smaller, at 170 nanometers deep, and were spaced at exactly 180 nanometers apart. Now the visible spectrum of light spans from about 400 nanometers for violet to 700 nanometers for red. The grooved glass plates can produce different colors with different widths of slits. A groove of 40 nanometers wide will trap red light and reflect a cyan color, while a groove of 60 nanometers will trap green light and produce a magenta hue. And 90 nanometers traps blue light and produces yellow. And with this reflective color, you can also view the display in sunlight. So how does this happen? Well, when light, which is a combination of electric and magnetic field components, hits the grooved surface, its electric component creates what's known as a polarization charge at the metal slit surface, boosting the local electric field near the slit. This electric field then pulls a particular wavelength of light in. This technology has the potential to be truly revolutionary and could lead to high resolution reflective color displays and e-readers and computer displays that are far more energy efficient. Because no backlighting or electrical power is required, as I said earlier, just imagine how much energy it would save across the globe. So, it's not just peahens that are impressed by the dazzling color displays of the peacocks, scientists are too. And inspiration from those shimmering tails could transform the way we manipulate light and produce color in a wide range of visual devices, including computer screens. Head to our website now, bbcworldservice.com slash 30 animals, where you'll find sources of information for this story. In the next episode of 30 Animals That Made Us Smarter, we'll be continuing our color theme when we explore how shimmering butterflies could transform paints and textiles. Thanks for listening. I'm 
Kim Chakaneta, and I'm the host of the Conversation podcast from the BBC World Service. Oh boy, I'm overwhelmed with so much to say in such a short time. Some recent favourites include an episode on female roadies, these two incredible women who've just been touring the world of musicians and had some incredible stories to tell. This is a live show and sometimes things go wrong and tonight something's gone wrong. <laughs> I also found the episode on women living with schizophrenia incredibly powerful. She does not believe that there's such a thing as a mental illness. She still thinks that perhaps it was her demonic possession that happened to me. Another episode was about women who were standing up to street harassment. I'm sick of it. It's in front of my house. It's in my street. It's near my train station. It's all the time. And I've always had female flight attendants on my wish list and we finally got to speak to two women who had spent a lot of time up in the air. People just stormed the door because they had to get off the plane. They were so scared. That's the conversation from the BBC World Service. You can't put price tag on these emotions. Search for The Conversation wherever you found this podcast.